without it. So I have a faulty Jeep ECU here. Um, currently, the problems it's having are these two codes here. And basically, they're throttle position codes. Um, but a little backstory with this ECU it actually was just sent to this place here, your part source, on 4 2 of 24. Uh, for alternator not charging, which is very typical of these ECUs. And uh, I see they got their little tamper proof tags there. They, they use a uh, clear sealant. I don't particularly like the clear sealant, sealant but uh, that's what they have there. And the customer said that, you know, since it's come back, it's had those two new codes and they, they won't do anything about it. They, they claim it's not anything they've done. And um, I don't believe that's accurate because I repair a lot of these. And I know that when you replace the driver for the alternator, that chip controls quite a bit of things. But if that chip's not soldered very well, you get those exact throttle codes. And it's happened to me multiple times. So I have to disagree with this place when they say they didn't cause it. I, I think that they did. It's just kind of goes along with replacing that uh, 33888. But anyway, I want to open it and see what it looks like inside. I don't know much about this place. I, I do see them around, and I know they charge like a hundred dollars more for the same thing that I do. I, I'm really surprised that they wouldn't warranty this. But um, uh, so far, I'm I'm not really impressed. The case is really bent, like it's all humped up, humped up here, and like I said, they use the clear sealant. And the reason that's humped up like this is because this is where they open it they open it here and then when they go to put it back they don't clean the uh, old silicone off they probably just glue over top the old one and then when they go to push it down the old silicone kind of gets in the way and won't really let you uh you know knock it down i don't know if they painted it or not it does look like it's been painted in, in the past by somebody you can see the gray kind of overspray on the labels here I'm assuming that they probably painted it but uh, right now all I can smell is the clear cell phone uh, let's, let's pop it open here all right so nothing too crazy I see the chip there. I'm going to get it under the microscope. You know, when I run into this problem, I don't know if it's because of the soldering on the chip or maybe the chips are just faulty because you know these chips are obsolete. So the only place you can get them now is out of China, which means they're probably scavenged or uh, was defective. Um, so you, you kind of take and risk replacing them whenever you get them out of China. I've actually, I've developed a different system to do these uh, that kind of helps with this since these are obsolete now. kind of made my own, own chip for it, but uh, I'll save that for another day. Right now, we're going to have to investigate this chip and um, probably we'll have to replace it. But I want to check the soldering first and then I definitely want to check around the edge, uh, check around the edges here. Uh, you know, especially right along here and then along the bottom here to see if something was damaged during the open, which happens all the time, too. You know, it happens to me, too. It happens to anybody trying to open these things. I'm, I'm not here trying to knock this company at all, but they should warranty when they work on something. Uh, that, that part's a little bit disappointing. But um, maybe they just haven't run into this that much. But it, it is because of the replacement of this chip. It, 
doesn't seem like it should have anything to do with the throttle, but it, for some reason it does. And I'm guessing because of the, there's some communication uh, that this chip has. And I think if it's mess, this chip is messed up a little bit, that it messes up something in that communication that's part of the uh, throttle. That's, that's my only guess. I've never really looked into it too much, just uh, some basic stuff. Let's take a look under the uh, microscope, see what's going on. Maybe we can uh, see a bad joint on the chip there. And if that's all it is, I'll probably just re-solder it and hopefully that will do it. Alright, so I can see here that this one is probably not connected. Um, but that's okay because that one's a no connect. It's not connected to anything, it's floating, so, you know, they just, they didn't care. I guess they used lead-free solder, it looks a little bit dull. I usually use lead for these. Uh, everything here looks connected. This one is kind of iffy, which this is one of the data pins, I believe. Yep, I think it's this one that comes here. Uh, it looks like it's <clears throat> almost touching, but I can see it's a little bit. A little bit funky. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. It's kind of a very difficult thing to see. I mean, you know, it, it may be fine, but it's a little bit, a little bit weird. So I'm trying to get this to focus here. It's very hard to look at this chip through the microscope because of the angles that you have to hold the ECU. Alright, so if you see stuff like this one, you know it looks soldered like this one and this one. It looks soldered, but a lot of times they're not. Um, a lot of times these chips, for some reason, the ones coming out of China, I guess because they've been scavenged and maybe they use some kind of chemical or, you know, sanded away part of the pad to make it look new, they have trouble with solder quite a bit um, you know making good joints or making good connections so both of these look like they're pretty poorly connected to tell you the truth I don't know how well it's going to show up in the camera but I definitely can see that this one is not good this one maybe is okay but it's not good it's, it's better just to make sure you do all joints exactly like this one. I, I know it looks like a lot of solder, but that way at least you know that you have a good connection. You know, they didn't they didn't do bad work. I mean, everything is okay. Just little stuff on these will cause trouble all the time. See, like this one, it's probably connected, but that just, it doesn't look good. It should come and hit this again. And this, these are probably all connected okay, but, you know, I, I would come and redo, not redo it, but just come with the iron, you know, put a little flux there, come with the iron on this side. And just kind of smooth all that out, make sure it gets a good connection. But anyway, um, it's not too bad. I do think I see some that are probably not connected, which are probably the problem. Mostly, mostly the three, mostly uh, the three right in this bottom corner. Which uh, this is the communication section for the chip, and this is what I've noticed tends to cause the most trouble uh, if it's got a bad connection. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to completely, man, what, what did I do with that? I'm going to completely replace this chip with one of mine. Uh, <clears throat> just because I know I have a source that's usually pretty good for the ones I do have. And um, just make sure I get good connection for all of it. I'm, I'm probably going to switch it to lead, too, I swear. I think that's lead for me. But it just makes it easier 
to work with. I'm going to clean it up and now I'm going to go around and solder it a little bit better. I might have to put solder and iron on. So I like to use and move this capacitor sometimes if it gives me troublesome so that I can reach this spot. Because even though it's a milk and milk, I still like to make sure it's connected. Right? Okay. And the main thing that we want to do here is make sure that each pen is well soldered. So rather than trying to drag it and do all the pens, I like to do one at a time. And if the fluff starts getting too brown, then it's best to clean it away. Put down the middle. But right now it's kind of not working too good over here because the flux is just starting to, starting to burn up. Okay, so I think that this one is good, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up before I move on to the next spot. I'm going to clean this up and make sure everything is in the connected there. Now this flux I'm using is pretty annoying, it's pretty, pretty aggressive and really hard to clean. So I'm going to zoom in and check each one of these. And that's how I like them to look. I like to be able to see the solder coming down from the top of the pin on the chip and then coming down like that. Now, I know most of the pen connects underneath, but still I like to be able to see that the solder is and indeed onto the pen. Now this is a ground connection, so I didn't want to look as good. But all of these are really well connected. Change the let's go here to the side. All right, let's start at the bottom so that we don't keep dripping down the burnt flux. Okay, let's clean that up and make sure it's good before we move on to the other side. All 
Okay, so all of those are connected. Good. You'll see it. It starts at the top of the chip and then goes down to the pad. Let's go to this other side now. This side is open. Let me grab that before I lose it and then cause trouble. This other side is a lot tighter because of the resistors. Uh, if you look there, those actually soldered good already, but I'm still going to read them all. So this is the spot where I think they were having the problem from before. About the bad joints. So I want to make sure I really get it good. Alright, now let's check the front. Usually the front is always connected pretty good the way that I do it. I still like to go around and just make sure that it's heated really well. And not, uh, you know, lumped up with little whiskers all over. I am not done yet. Once I once I finish with that, I like to fix that capacitor that was moved. And also, uh, I like to hit it with hot air again to try to help clean up that leftover flux and then I'll clean it a little bit more. It just helps clean it up. But, no, I'll probably just move that with the hot air, tell you the truth. I'm just going to try to keep it all up pretty good again. Maybe a little bit unnecessary, but I was going to say it kind of helps clean up the extra flux that's under there. Oh, pretty good. Only thing that's still there I don't like is the tissues. I will probably do one more alcohol draw and one more brush. Let's try to draw all that away. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to uh, test it. So now that's all done, I'm going to just do some test with the meter here just to make sure I don't have any short. Ooh. All right, so none of these should be shorted with ground. They are not. I should have a ground in the heat. Let me go back under the microscope. All right, so I still have the red probe on the ground. Okay, so I just want to check, make sure none of these pins here on the side are shorted. Yes, I can see none of them over there. Focus is all messed up for some reason. So we should not have a connection here, we should not have it here, or here, we should have it here, and here, not here, here, and here is good. Alright. Okay, so there is good. Here, no. Here, no. Here, we should. No. No. 
No, 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 no. Yes. No. No. Yes. Over here, no, 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 yes. No, 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 okay. Now I'm going to go over here and find this guy. So this is where the uh, power for this thing is connected. It's just an easy test for me. And we'll make sure we have power here. We do. I'm gonna. There's a little pin in the very front of this. It's also the power. I can't see it. There it is. So that is connected. Okay, I'm just gonna go around all of these and make sure none of those connect. I do not. What you call these? Okay, and then this one should, okay? Or if not, that one's something else. Okay. All of those are good. Just want to make sure none of these are connected. None of these are connected. None of these are connected. Okay, and you want to make sure none of these are all sorted with the power. Alright, and they're not. And then once that is done, I'm going to do it one more time, just beside each other. So far, everything has been good. These should not have any connection to them whatsoever. Ah, sorry, that that's fine. What I mean, uh, they shouldn't have any, uh, you know, shorts between them. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing over right here. I'm also going to check these two. Basically, I just want to make sure nothing in between here has any, uh, you know, bridges or anything. And this is a uh, pretty Pretty accurate way to do it. I mean, uh, these are both round, so that's that's okay. Okay, and these two are both round, so that's okay. Alright, so yeah, that's all done. <clears throat> uh, so I am pretty happy with it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and. I have to test it still, but I'm going to go ahead and put um, some formal coating on it so it can dry while I'm testing it. And then I can, you know, I, all my testing I'll be doing, you know, through the harnesses. So, uh, and then uh, once it's dry, I can seal it up as long as the test is good. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. Usually, as long as you have a good connection there. Right. Doesn't really have to have a conformal coating, but you know. I always have to put it down. Makes a mess if you gotta rework it though. But um yeah, that's it. I'm going to just run a few function tests on it, make sure everything is good, and then uh, hand it off to the customer. And, um, I'll update how it goes, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be good now. I, I'm fairly confident that the issue was either this joint on this corner here or the second up from the right. They were they were pretty uh, suspect. So, all right. Hope uh, hope you guys enjoyed.